<laughs> We're actually not going to use yeah. legislative time. Everyone knows what that means uh, for the, those folks that are elected. That means we say 10 o'clock and that might be 10, 15, 10, 30 ish. But we, we really value your time for coming this morning um, to uh, the shared services plan of the final stages of this particular cycle and it continues on. So one, thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you all for being here this morning. Um, the County Executive will be here um, probably around quarter to 11, but he's just coming not to say hi or anything like that, because we have really important work to do, and it's all of you that are gonna vote on these particular things this morning. So again, I wanna thank all of you that are here this morning. Say welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we certainly have, um, we have the Deputy Director of Operations, Emily Saltzman. We have, I can't even remember the titles anymore, right? Susan Spear, who is amazing. Right? <laughs> Assistant Director of Operations. Thank you, Assistant Director of Operations, but also amazing, right? Um, Larry So, our Budget Director, a bunch of our folks from the County Executive Team, including the one that interacts with you all um, directly, which is Ellen Hendricks. Um, Aviva Maya, um, Copper Crane, and, and Walter Murphy, and anybody else who's got, oh wait, and Emily Lavin is behind the camera, which is uh, the second most important person. But at this time, we're gonna get it moving, we're gonna turn it over to Emily or Susan. Susan Spear is gonna take us on and, uh, and walk through this. Again, thank you all for coming this morning. Thank you all for allowing us. Um, we were in Austin um, with, with, with Supervisor on Wednesday last week, I'm doing public hearings, we have volunteers all over. Again, thank you so much, and let's get it going. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Um, so the purpose of the meeting today um, is uh, to adopt the uh, updated Westchester Shared Services Plan, which includes many of the uh, great innovative ideas that you have contributed, as well as several of the ideas that the County Executive and Deputy County Executive have contributed. So um, the first thing we're going to do after uh, we walk through the agenda is there's going to be a preview of the Westchester Shares por Portal. This, as you may remember from previous meetings, is the uh, marketplace uh, for the county, the towns, and the school districts to share information about items that they have for purchasing and sharing that will save you guys money and make you eligible for state matching funds. So um, I really want to express how deeply we appreciate all of your participation and your cooperation with this project. It's uh, taken a little while to get going. We did get a state grant to develop the project and our IT department has done, really gone above and beyond and done phenomenal work. I'll introduce them in a minute, but I just want to really acknowledge the work that they did in putting this together for you. So the way I describe this is it's not Amazon.com, it's more like Match.com. <laughs> Not that I'm familiar with that, but I, so I hear, <laughs> what, I, what I hear is that um, it allows you to uh, see what's out there and uh, make a potential match, but then it will be, but you can't actually purchase the goods through this site, so not Amazon.com. So you can find a match, you can talk with your potential partner and see if there's a savings for you and um, how that might work uh, for savings and then um, state matching funds. So after we get that uh, brief preview of the portal, which everybody, towns, villages, school districts, cities, are all eligible to use it, and there's no limit on the number of people that can use it. So if you have um, a purchasing agent in your town or city, if, uh, if you have a village administrator, a treasurer, they can all use it, there's no limit. So we intentionally set it up that way. Once we preview the portal, then we're going to do an overview of the 2020 ideas that you submitted and that we developed to, and that will be for purposes of updating the plan that we will then uh, submit to the state um, as an updated plan and make us eligible for our uh, state matching funds. Then we're going to walk through the next steps and then we're going to vote. So with that, I want to introduce um, Scott Fernquist for our, from our 
um, IT department who is going to just give you a brief <laughs> preview on, uh, on how the portal works. And actually, I uh, also want to acknowledge our Commissioner Marguerite Byrne from IT to talk a little bit about the portal as well. Thank you, Susan. So we're so excited to be here. Actually, I also want to acknowledge the rest of the team that was we've been working tirelessly on this portal the past several months. Um, Nancy Bierenbaum and Anna Geraldo Gomez and uh, Garija Kamal, we're all part of the team. You'll be see seeing more of us um, as we do additional trainings on this portal starting in January. So um, just to give you a heads up about that, we're just going to give you a brief sort of high level overview of this site um, today, which we're very excited went live as of last Thursday. So this is really um, fresh off the press. And here's the actual site. So I wanted to show you, Susan mentioned um, the municipalities that we hope um, really everyone will take advantage of this portal. Um, this is the list currently showing all of the cities, towns, villages, and school districts in Westchester County. You'll notice the only one that's currently linked is the county. Um, because we're the only ones that so so far have what's called a storefront. I'm just going to quickly show you what that looks like. So all of your municipalities will eventually have a storefront. What this is, it's basically a landing page where you can provide contact information, a brief description of your municipality, um, and then future goods and services that you post will be linked back to your storefront. So here we have different contact um, information for each of the different departments that currently provide shared services for the county. So there's really nothing stopping you. We want to really encourage you all to register for this portal today because most of the site is really locked down until you have an account. So you can't really see a lot of what's on the site until you register. So I'm going to show you the registration form. It's a really basic form, so once you fill this out and you click finish, um, you will get an email sent to your personal email or, or the email that you, you, that you, that you provide um, confirming that you've registered. And we will then activate your registration within 24 hours. I'm actually going to log in so you can see some of the features that are only available if you're logged in. top you'll see that there's participating municipality. I just showed you that page. This is the link to the main directory, which is where you're going to find all of the different listings, um, news, and forums. So when you go on to search for an item, um, or you're not really sure what you want to search for, you would just want, just want to see what's out there, you have two options. There's this box on the very front page, which is, which is a search box, or you can click on the directory link here, which is what I'm going to do. And if you click on it, so you'll see that items that we've already preloaded into the system, these are all real things, um, services, goods that the county is providing. So we've already created, um, we're working on this actively, so we're actually expanding this as we speak, but you can go on there and see these items today. But I'm gonna just show you a sample search. So let's say you're looking for digital printing. You wanna print something through the county, let's say through the county's print shop, you can type in print. There's actually two items related to print. We have, a, we have a contract you can use, which is for our Xerox multifunction devices. Or you can, let's say you want to learn more about digital printing services, you click here. Okay, and then the one item comes up. All right, so then if you want to drill down to the item and learn more about it, you just click here. And you get some more details. So I'm just going to briefly explain what these things mean. So. You see this crossed out number here? That's what we're, we're calling the market or retail price. So 11 cents is what you would pay if you were getting it, let's say at a Staples or an outside agency. The four cents is the price that we, the county, charge. Okay, and so really a great benefit of this portal is that we're gonna start to be able to track savings. Um, and as Susan and others have mentioned in previous events, the state really wants to know how much the county is saving um, from doing these shared services. So we're going to be able to calculate that and then put in for state matching grants. So that's really a great reason to use this portal. 
So down here you can see that there's different information attached to the item. You can see that this is a Westchester County Shared Service. Um, associated documents, you can see that there's a PDF with the entire, uh, all the different print rates for all you know, that we offer, and all the information you need there. And if you want to express interest, all you do is create a record. Okay, you click there and, you'll, and it'll walk you through the steps. I'm not going to go into that level of detail today, but I just wanted to point that out. So, let's see, what else should I show you today? Uh, I think that was the main stuff that I wanted to show you. Yeah. Uh, the, um, registration, mm -hmm. who do you want, which kind of name are you looking for there? So, there are different roles, and so it really depends. I mean, it depends on who's doing the purchasing for your municipality. And there's, as Susan mentioned, there's no limit to how many people can register. Um, but certain departments probably are going to be more actively using this than others. So we know that big purchasers out there are like from Public Works or from the Parks Department. Maybe you have a central purchase, like big cities like White Plains, or you have a purchasing department. So there would be someone who's probably the purchasing agent for the city would probably be the best person to register. Um, but so I actually want to, in general, the it's leaving it up to you. Right, but right, I, I mean, just to initially set up, set up the account, it could be any of those people or it could be... It could be anyone that you authorize to sort of go ahead and do that. Um, but I want to actually quickly show you, I forgot, I, I kind of skipped over it, but I shouldn't know that. When you do register, I want to show you that there are three different options in terms of role. This I should have actually explained this. Um, so if you just want to browse the cataloging, that person is not going to need to actually use this system to post items, let's say, on behalf of your town. They would just request catalog only, and then that would just give them access to the directory. If they're going to be someone that's browsing the catalog and maybe starting a, a transaction or expressing interest, they would be considered a purchaser. Store administrator is the highest level of access, so that's somebody that you want to actually give the authority to create a storefront and actually post items, uh, manage communications with the different towns. So you probably don't want everyone to have that level of access, so you probably want to pick somebody in your office that um, is more of a senior level or is going to actually have more time to work on this. So it really just depends, but those are the three levels, and we'll see. So when this comes through to us, um, you know, we'll see what each person's requesting. And the reason that there is this approval process, we know that somebody maybe by accident is, approved, is requesting administrative access, but really they should have a lower level access, so we'll reach out to you to verify that that's actually how you want to have it set up. Um, that's a great question. So yeah, this is working, we tested this, we want everyone to use this, um, and so there's really, um, it's a great opportunity to start the registration process, and then as I said, in the, in the new year, we're gonna be doing more in-depth trainings, so that everyone can get really comfortable with the portal um, and set up their storefronts. But even if you want to set up a storefront and you actually take it to the next level, there's an email address on the um, handout that you all received. It's westchestershares at westchestergov.com, and we will respond to that right away. Um, all of us have access to that email address. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. If there's something else you guys want to see or if, oh yeah, the other thing I'm, I'm sorry, the one thing I wanted to mention too. We have this really cool collaboration. Oh, now you can't see it because I logged out. Um, but there's a forums. There are forums, um, like chat. You can chat with each other, ask questions to us, to each other. So I just want to quickly show you that. Um, at the top here. Right, so here. If you're not sure about something or you want to start a discussion or you you know just don't know where to get started this is a great place to start we're monitoring this so you can um, you know it's like an old-fashioned kind of discussion thread group so you can you all have access to use that once you register for the site so any other questions yeah so if we want to see that we want to have the county sorry so if we see that we want to have the county use the county uh, so, So if we see that we want to have the county do printing services, as an example, for four cents, what happens then? Do we click a button and yeah. check out, or does it just start an email conversation? Can you take us through the process of past finding the service that we'd like to use? So there is a checkout process. Um, I wasn't going to show you all of that today. That's something we're going to get into more you know, as, as part of the training. But to answer your question, there is a checkout process. You click that Create Record button. 
and then you basically will submit it, and then the person, the point person for that service will be notified, and then they'll reach out to you. And there's some transaction that happens on line, but there's nothing financial that occurs. So really it's just a way to express interest, and then there are fields and things that you can fill out to basically capture the costs and what you're saving, because really we want this site to be used to capture the activity. Um, so if you want to see that, I can follow up with you after this and I can show you actually and walk you through it. Um, I just didn't want to, you know, go down into that level of detail right now, but we can definitely show you that and it, it's just a, a few more clicks basically. So. I just want to remind everyone here that um, the portal is also an opportunity for you to make some money if you can on services and equipment that you're not using 24 seven. So we really want you and your staff to think creatively about hosting if you have either room for storage of equipment in one of your warehouses or cherry pickers. I mean, I think basically everything but snow removal and garbage collection equipment, which I imagine is used to the, its maximum capacity, but many other things are not, and it's easier for you to share them sometimes than to go out and purchase a new. So we really want this portal to also be an opportunity for you to think about what you might be able to share with other municipalities. And as we've mentioned and will continue to mention, all of those types of activities are eligible for the state match. So we want you to think not just about what you may want to purchase in the future, but what you may currently have to share already. Yeah, and the more people that use it, the more useful it becomes because it's really, we want this to be like a one-stop shop for shared services for all of the counties. So do you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, can you, I'm not sure this is uh, Can you please explain the state match? We're How does that to work? That. Where do the funds go? We will, we're going to have a minute. It's outside of my purview. <laughs> Good question. All right, Paul. Here, I'm wondering, is there going to be like a running tally of which communities are participating in each of the types of purchases? So for example, if, you, if a community buys a digital uh, you know, copying, will there be like a list of, you know, say 20 communities that are doing it? Because I have a feeling that that would put pressure on everybody else to uh, also participate. So there's nothing built into the system right now that's like some kind of a public view in terms of activity outside of your own municipality, but so when you're logged in, you're gonna have a, you're gonna see all of the records and transactions that you are involved with, but you're not gonna be able to see like neighboring towns and municipalities. We're still working out the different reports that we can start to generate from this system, so that's um, something we can look into, but it's not currently set up to give you that level of um, visibility. That's an interesting question. Yep. Is there anything that would push out an email to participating municipalities if you are looking for something? Like notifications if something gets posted? Yeah. That is not a current feature. Um, automated notifications when things get posted. That's an interesting question. Um, we can definitely add it to a list of. Yeah, I know like our RFP, I'm just thinking, because I know the county's RFP system does that. When, when things come up, keywords, you get notified. Um, we can look into it, yeah, it could be a future enhancement. We hope that you go to the site regularly and check things out, what's changing, but um, good, good point. Anything else? Are you hoping to capture, share it, sir? Are you hoping to capture from a sort of accounting and reverse standpoint shared services that are already going on that are simply loans, no money changes hands? So we're trying to put a, you know, we're, we're trying to quantify the savings even for services that currently, do, that we're not charging for. So the county does this in a number of areas, for example, in the area of GIS services and things like that. So that does, those are eligible for state matching grants, but right now we don't really have a mechanism to track those savings, so we're hoping that this can be used that way, but I don't know what you mean by loans, so. Somebody borrowed equipment from the program. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Out, I'm sorry. you figure out what a daily rate would be? Figure out what a daily rate would be, let's say, on really something more like that. <laughs> 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 you might be able to 
might not charge, but you could say, I could have charged you $300 for the day, and I gave it to you for three days, so the savings is $900 to that other municipality. And then that can go into the reimbursement formula. And it's in our point yeah. of interest to document that. Absolutely, and that's what exactly. we'll track the same. We actually met with our DPW office last week, and they were saying that there was, I guess, a law saying that you can, any municipality can, for example, sell a vehicle to any other municipality for really um, whatever price they wish. It's really, you know, no bid situation. Um, and so if, if, you know, we want to capture even savings from those types of transactions, because that could all be very helpful information. <coughs> all right, so I think that's it from me. So. Um, again, you'll be hearing from us more. Please register, spread the word. Um, any questions, reach out to us at that email address. Um, we're really looking forward to working with you, and we hope this is a you know, big success here at Westchester. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to uh, Scott and Commissioner Byrne and to all of the IT folks who um, have done a fantastic job putting this together. You will be hearing from us. Um, in January, where uh, we are going to do a tutorial, and you'll be able to send anybody you want from your community uh, to, to participate and get a more in-depth uh, tutorial about exactly how it works and how you can benefit. And I do just want to emphasize what Emily said, which is you can post things also. It's not just the communities buying things from the county, but the, the towns and cities can also post their own things that they want to share with other towns and cities and benefit from that. And school districts, sorry. Thank you, Deputy County Executive. And school districts, yes. Um, okay, so uh, next I just want to run through some of the um, additions to the plan that we're anticipating for 2020. And uh, this is your opportunity to comment on those and add anything else that you would like to see for your community. So I'm going to do this fairly quickly, but uh, please stop me if, um, if anybody has any questions. So as you've heard from us before, we, the county has entered into a contract with NYPA, the New York Power Authority, to solarize some of our buildings, the county buildings and facilities throughout the county. The uh, towns and cities and school districts can purchase uh, from that contract as well. So basically we're starting with a feasibility study and then we'll move to the next step. We have already heard from many, many communities who want to participate in this contract uh, with us and we have many of those listed already, but if you have not let us know that you'd like to participate and have some of your buildings analyzed for feasibility for solarization, let us know and we will gladly add you. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, is there any capture of the tax credits bonuses that are available to uh, private person people in, 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 this, in this plan? Because one of the problems has been is since we don't pay taxes, we can't get tax credits. So is there, is there any way that that's been uh, incorporated? Um, I don't think we've really thought about that at this point. What we've thought about was the cost of the feasibility study um, that you would do on your own versus uh, as part of the NIPA contract. But that's a really great question, and we'll certainly look into it uh, when we get to the to stage two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know that NYSERDA has got an incentive uh, for municipalities that wish to solarize their buildings. And do you know whether we would still be able to take advantage of those if we were to participate with the NYPA solarized contract? Yes, this NYPA contract is the feasibility study. So then when you move on to, um, impl so this tells you if it's worth it or not, then if, uh, if you find that it is, then you would be eligible when you do the actual work uh, for the NYSERDA benefits. Thank you. Uh, next, again, Thank yeah, you. oh, sorry. That's okay. So I don't know if any school districts are actually here in the room right they now. Are. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see them. Okay, so um, is, I mean, there's an issue, I think, with SED on, what, on school districts. They can't just do whatever they want, you know, so. Has anybody, has anyone talked to them about whether they can participate in this, in this solarized project? Has okay. anyone talked to the State Department of Education? Um, we haven't talked to the state um, about that particularly. It, you know, it, I think the school districts know whether they're able to participate or not. I mean, if they need us to, you know, be part of the feasibility analysis, but um, you know, we can certainly talk to the state if that would be helpful. I don't know if it's state law that, you know, obviously that requires a state law change. Right. Okay. 
Um, next is uh, the Northern Westchester uh, Wireless Master Plan. Um, this is a really creative and innovative um, project that the Northern Westchester communities brought to us to create a master plan for uh, wireless coverage and um, all kinds of things that go along with that, whether it's model town ordinances, zoning issues, uh, coverage issues, technical specs. You know, as these communities are facing pressure from commercial um, entities, it, this will give them a uh, real opportunity to work together and have more leverage when they're uh, dealing with the uh, commercial entities and also know more about where they need to or don't need to site a tower. So in other words, if you know, they look at a full coverage map rather than just a limited municipal specific coverage map, it can give them better insights into what's needed and what, what's not needed. So this is the planning piece of um, the project to do a, a regional master plan. And as I said, it's a pilot program, so it will be available to other communities and other parts of the county uh, once we, we go through this process and, and see how it works. Comments or questions on that? Okay. So next is the uh, County Health Consortium with MEBCO, uh, Municipal Employees Benefits Corporation. The county did a presentation to all the communities who are interested, school districts and uh, municipalities, about the opportunity with MEBCO to um, have a consortium for health, um, health benefits for your employees. Uh, it's basically healthcare, prescription drugs, and also includes retirees as well. So there's a tremendous potential for savings here. But again, it really depends on your individual circumstances. So um, MEBCO is very interested in talking to any municipality or school district that's interested, and they will go through with you, they'll walk through all the pricing and all the details for how it would impact your municipality. But it's out there for anybody who wants to take advantage of it. Again, tremendous potential savings um, for some, and um, moderate savings for others, depending on your uh, particular situation. Water and sewer. So um, most of you know Mike Kaplowitz, who um, is now our Deputy Commissioner of uh, DEF, or Department of Environmental Facilities. And we're looking at a whole host of opportunities here that we've heard a lot from the Sound Shore communities and other communities throughout the county about possibilities of all different types of uh, water, sewer district consolidations, uh, public-private partnerships, and Mike is tasked with really looking at the issue comprehensively and working with the municipalities to see what's feasible, uh, what we can do, and um, what the savings might be, and of course what the environmental benefits would be as well. Next we have the food uh, scrap recycling program. We are evaluating um, facilities and programs for the county to uh, look at benefits from recycling food waste. Um, this is you know, really sort of new and uh, up and coming project that's really going on all over the country, but we're looking at it specifically for Westchester to be environmentally responsible, reduce our uh, greenhouse gases, and, and also save uh, hopefully some money in, in fees or uh, operating costs for the communities that uh, really can't do it themselves because of uh, size and volume. Uh, uh, Lauren, yeah? Are you looking at a, a county-wide compost uh, you know, location? Because the big problem with food scrap recycling is it's being uh, sent yeah. to Ulster County or you know, a big way, you know, we're really not saving that much. We're gonna be making an announcement um, in the new year regarding the findings of a study We have to include this in the plan that we submit right now for acting on it in the coming year. Yeah. Um, when do we anticipate the final report being completed? The uh, final report, uh, the proposed uh, updated report for 2020, will be completed by the end of the year, the end of this calendar year, and submitted to the state um, either by the end of December or uh, early January. And at that time, we'll also have the um, expected net savings from 2019 to submit to the state as well. That's for the uh, food composting? Oh, no, no, no. no. This, these, um, yeah. What I'm going through with you now no, is well, the updates for 2020. But I have a question about the food composting. Yeah, so what is, is coming in January? January, thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so um, Mike, 
Uh, law enforcement and EMS, we've had um, a lot of uh, suggestions. I won't go detail them all right now, but they'll be in the, in the final plan, um, just for specialized law enforcement services and, and EMS services. Um, if any of you have any questions, we'd be happy to, to answer those later. Uh, but we have, a, we, what we, you know, with a lot of these, what we want to do is uh, use a placeholder, a general category, so that whatever we develop in 2020 will then be eligible for state matching funds at the end of the year. So this is kind of a placeholder for all those uh, specialized law enforcement and EMS services that we are going to be working through in 2020. I just want to add, um, the county executive has asked me to reach out to all of you to talk to you about the success that Mount Kisco has had um, by partnering with the County Department of Public Safety for local law enforcement. So I encourage you to speak to Mayor Pickenich about her feelings about this and uh, we'll be sending you some more information shortly. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great initiative and significant savings uh, for Mount Kisco. So we're um, really appreciative of the cooperation with that project. And you know, there are other projects like it, like our school resource officers working in the schools. Um, and that partnership has been very successful. And uh, we hope to grow it with other school districts as well. Uh, we have a tax assessors working group. We're working with uh, tax assessors from many of your communities to look at uh, shared services like improved uh, GIS mapping, um, billing, software purchases, all of those things are, are very much on the table through that working group. Yeah. I noticed that the working group is tax assessors and the mandate is tax collection and billing as well. So are, you, are the receivers part yes. of that? Yes, they are. Yeah, absolutely. They absolutely are. We just didn't write it all out in the PowerPoint. Yes. Yeah. And uh, last but certainly not least, we received many, many suggestions from communities. I want to you know, shout out to Mamaronek, um, who gave us a list of a lot of the shared services that they're working on between the town, the village, and the school district. They're all in the plan uh, for 2020, and that makes them eligible for the state match. So I'll turn it over to Emily for what's next. One of the things that many of you have spoken to us about is how can I get credit for things that I'm already doing? And we do acknowledge, this county executive certainly acknowledges all the time, there is already a lot of sharing of services going on. However, the requirements of these uh, plans for um, reimbursement requ require that these things be new. We're happy to work with you on the definition of new. So just keep that in mind. Um, so in terms of what's next, um, as Susan laid out, the schedule for us is adop adopting the plan. That's what you are all here to do today. And I just want to make clear that opting in is, that, is a commitment that you will make every best effort to participate in these initiatives. So I don't believe that there will be an audit while well, you voted for X and you didn't do Y. It's your um, willingness to make every best effort to participate in these shared services opportunities. There will be one more public presentation. I believe last year we did a Facebook Live and we'll probably do something similar just to review the plan one more time as per the requirements and we will submit the plan to the state. And then in January, as Susan mentioned, we will apply for matching funds. I just want to talk through a couple of announcements that have come out uh, from the state that make it clear that this is a very real opportunity for all of us. Um, the, there's $225 million that was appropriated a couple of years ago for shared services. And the program was extended um, through 2021. So there really is a tremendous opportunity. Um, the state has recently announced two appropriations to counties, $3.1 million to Broome County and $6.4 million to Onondaga County. So this is real money. And um, as we've spoken with the Department of State, which is the lead agency on this, we you know, regarding how to demonstrate the savings. It's very important as we go through this, you know, finishing up this year and going into next year that we keep track of, the, of these savings so that we have, instead of scurrying at the end of the year to kind of prove the money that we saved, 
Um, in those counties, I will say the bulk of the savings regarding um, had to do with either a pharmacy benefit that um, was, was a big chunk of the money for Onondaga County and um, something similar for Broome County. So I can send you all the press releases to show you that this is real and we understand that there will be some more announcements for, um, we are a year behind because we revised our plan. So as Susan said, we're gonna submit our 2019 savings in 20 and hopefully get um, Larry is here waiting, waiting uh, with bated breath for the check to come from the state. So we're very serious about that. Um, as I said, the state match, uh, do I? Um, the uh, state matching fund um, does require documentation. So if you have things that you think you can quantify for 2019, please email them to Susan with whatever documentation you have to prove that. And we'll be working with our county departments, um, et cetera. Again, these are savings for items that were in the plan that we submitted last year. Um, and then next year we'll submit for the plan that, that we're discussing today. Um, the great thing about the portal is that it will automatically record that. So that should make it a lot easier for us to track going forward. Um, does anyone have any questions about the potential for this uh, matching and submission to the state? We'll be um, coming to you with a little bit clearer guidance on that so that we know what we can do uh, going forward. Great, thank you so much. So um, our next step is to vote on the plan. Um, you should have all received um, a vote sheet, uh, one per municipality or school district. So if you uh, would fill that out, and um, pretty self-explanatory, uh, your mayor, superintendent, uh, municipality, your vote on the plan, any uh, additional recommendations that you have in the signature, that if you don't have one, people will be coming around to give them to you. And then once you vote, we'll have people coming around to collect them. If you don't have it, if you could just raise your hand, and uh, we have Rosie and Ellen that are handing out and the extras, and and do do take advantage of the additional recommendation section. If you have something that that you didn't see or didn't hear, um, it's easier to put it down and us include it than us. Because if you don't include it in the plan, it is not going to be eligible for twenty twenty dollars. As Emily was just so aptly pointing out, right? That's the way that we need to do it. So again, if it's an idea that you're working on in the town, um, that we need to uh, make sure that happens. Um, I want to make sure that we recognize the, uh, the two county legislators who both ask questions, but they are here, right? County Legislator Mary Jane Shipsky, and certainly County Legislator Nancy Ball. Uh, while you're working on that, uh, on the screen for your information is the uh, link to the Shared Services Portal. It's also in the instruction handout that you received uh, when you came in, and also a link to the Shared Services website, which has all the resources from the county. And I uh, just to reiterate again that in January, please look for a, uh, a day or several days where we'll be doing tutorials for anybody in your community who um, wants to learn more about how to use the portal and uh, how you can benefit from that. Questions, hey, and, and before you, before you go, I mean, if, and, but Emily mentioned it, and again, we can't say it enough, thank you all for all of the participation that you've had in this. And whether it's today or whether it's been at the meetings at the county center and in your local communities, the school districts, et cetera, we really appreciate this because this is how we can work together to save dollars. Um, Emily was being kind when she said that this money is real money, right? It's real things that we can do between each other. And the portal, um, and utilizing the portal is not a way just to talk to the county as we say. It's a way to talk to each other and making sure that we're able to track those dollars more um, easily because we're gonna go through an effort to do some of that for 2019, um, which, which knows that is absolutely essential. Supervisor. After you apply for the money, the state says you did a really great job. Here's a lot of money. 
how does that get to the municipality? Well, I'll let Emily uh, explain that. So we have uh, discussed that, and I think um, it is our plan to share back with the municipalities savings that are um, depending on the type of savings. So if by using the portal, use your municipality saves $50,000, that sounds like a lot, um, and we get that reimbursed to us, then we would share that back with you. If there are situations in which um, two municipalities are participating in something and it is 50-50, then we would, so it is our plan to share it back. I think we have to um, take a look and see what some of the types of sharing experiences are, but it is definitely our plan for the participating mm -hmm. municipalities to benefit from the sharing. So actually yeah. there's a double sharing. If we're sharing with another municipality, we're saving money. Yes. And then when the state reimburses, and hopefully we'll get more money. Right, yes. Right. Yes. 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 So it is, I mean, it's only state money for one piece of that, yes. But you also have the sharing and the savings of it. Um, so a couple of things that Susan mentioned, um, we did introduce uh, former county legislator Kapowitz. He will be taking a look at the sewer districts and refuse districts and having a lot of meetings with you, regional meetings, et cetera. Uh, many, many times people, um, both residents and municipal leaders have come to us and said there has to be some money and a way to um, save money by consolidation of sewer districts, looking at how they're operating, et cetera. So that is Mike's charge from the county executive, and certainly he will be in touch with all of you, but if you are raring to go and really want to be part of what he's looking at, um, as soon as he's getting started, then um, reach out to Mike or reach out to us and we will connect you with him to do that. So again, one, one of the things as we went through this, we have a few different regional opportunities that are gonna come up in January. Um, you all um, did hear that we did our housing needs assessment. Um, we are doing regional meetings and, and somebody will tell us where those regional meetings are. If you want your own meeting, that is certainly an option to do. So if you reach out um, to, to Emily, and to Susan, we'll just we'll just follow it appropriately, or Ellen, to let them know, but to discuss that, because that's another regional opportunity. Um, you know, we, we kind of clustered one of the big ones that's happening, that's really important for whether your town, your village, or your city. Um, we don't think uh, cities may take advantage of it because of the size, but it's certainly something that you may want to do from a, um, a law enforcement perspective with the new records management system that is we're trying to build as a shared service. So we'll be able to do that as a shared service and share that with the local municipalities so you're not buying from a vendor and all those other kind of things and be able to share that data and link it into whatever things we need to do with the district attorney's office, um, get that information out, and it's, good, it's gonna be a good opportunity to see. So anything that those things are, um, we're, we're gonna continue to do that. Um, we know that there's census dollars. Um, Emily would be happy to tell you all about every dollar and how the census thing is working, so I'm gonna pass over to her. So since we have you all in the room, we can um, share that kind of information with you. Okay, thank you, Ken. While well, Susan is uh, collating the results, and we appreciate you all staying so we can announce the results to you. Um, as some of you know, uh, New York State announced uh, a couple of weeks ago that they were going to make funding available just to counties. And um, within that structure, a few cities, including the city of Yonkers and Westchester, did receive an individual allocation. So that was a little bit different from what we were expecting. So we are currently in the process of figuring out what makes the most sense, both in terms of efficacy as well as getting the money out the door quickly. Um, so there will be an opportunity for organizations to apply for some grants, as well as the possibility that there will be things that the county will do on behalf of municipalities, whether it's purchasing certain promotional items, helping with events, et cetera. 
the county executive uh, reached out to all of you to encourage every municipality to form a local complete count committee and we'd like to continue to encourage those of you who haven't done so already and it's I think more than half of the um, local governments now in the county do have some form of complete count committee. They com those committees can be anything that you want them to be and it's very important that this be a really truly organic operation in which local leaders, local residents, etc., decide how best to incentivize residents to fill out the census. I want to be clear because um, I've spoken at some community meetings. There isn't one population or another that we're targeting. There are populations that have traditionally been less um, less likely to fill out a census form, renters, children under five, seniors, people who are foreign born. But we are pushing every resident to fill out the form and everybody to tell everybody else that they know how important the census is for the county. Susan also has worked with our federal department since she started and can tell you in great detail <laughs> about the federal funding and the state funding that comes into this county based on our census numbers. The county executive will also tell you that our share back of the sales tax money is based on census numbers. So we can't stress enough how important it is for all of your residents to hear from you in every way that you interact with them how important it is to fill out the census form. Um, they are going to be another thing to keep in mind. Census um, information is going to come in a letter in the U.S. mail. Lots of people don't really look at their mail anymore as a place um, from which important information comes, but it is. It's going to, in most cases, be a code that you would go online to fill out your form. So we have um, a different kind of census participation this year, but the actual code is coming in the mail. So that's gonna be from mid to late March with census day, April 1st of 2020. We'll be having a number of activities from uh, January until the end of April to highlight this, but it's really important for all of you to think about from a local government perspective how you can promote participation in the census. It's really, really up. Oh. And our county executive has joined us and um, we'll invite him to come up here and talk about the importance of shared services. Thank you. This is a test. <laughs> I'm not sure what you've covered so far. I know that we're here to uh, finalize a plan that we can submit to the state, and it's not an intellectual exercise. The intent is that we get state assistance, and that that financial assistance will go to the municipality as well as to the county, depending on what it is that we've been able to identify and go forward with it. Since I don't know how far you've covered, and I don't want to try to figure out how to fit right into what you were, I'll just make some very general comments. Um, I, I hope it's apparent in the almost two years of, of our administration that uh, this county administration has a great respect for local government and a great desire to work cooperatively with local government. That doesn't mean that on every issue we're always going to be in the same place. It doesn't mean that you don't have certain corporate interests uh, to, do, to protect your particular taxpayers that will always make it possible for you to cooperate in the way theoretically that cooperation could occur. But I do think that we've shown uh, in issues large and small that uh, we can find common ground if we look for it. And if we try to put aside some of the natural suspicions that every entity has toward every other entity, that we can make some progress. Uh, we know that the, um, the nature of uh, shared services are is that we find things for which you're providing a service and we're providing a service or neighboring communities are providing a service and we can find a way to uh, lower the cost of it by that shared activity. But I think those of us in government understand it's not as easy as people outside of government think it is. Most people think there's an automatic overlap when they see a, a governmental map and they see that within the town of Greenberg there are X number of villages and then there's an overall town and then there's the county 
Uh, if you get on the train every day and go into the city and you're an expert in law, you're an expert in finance, you have an academic or medical profession of which you're expert in, you don't necessarily understand the structure of local government. And you might think that the people who uh, do this within this village are the same people who also do it in the town and they don't necessarily see the, the differences. So what we have to try to do in this plan and, and going forward is to differentiate what is real about shared services. And then also, in a world of practicality, what is practical? Obviously, some of you are here as appointed officials, and some of you are here as I am as an elected official. And there is a reality to politics. This is not R versus D. There's a reality to what people expect to see elected officials do. I've been at this a long time. I've been at this at different levels of governments. And if you try to ignore the realities of politics, you're foolish. And that's just a straight out fact. There are people who will see a potential financial savings for merger, but the concept of the merger doesn't work based on how they view themselves and the community they live in or what they think of as the attention they are going to get or would get under a shared function. That is the way it is. And uh, I've sat in Albany, and I do understand that if you come out of a, a, a New York City reality where you have a one jurisdiction of 8 million people, you tend to look at the, the smaller breakdowns of governments outside of New York City as sort of superfluous, as if these are neighborhood association type organizations, and they happen to be called villages, and they happen to have their own distinct realities on it. But that doesn't mean it's not real. And, and I know, and I'm sure you know, those of you who are elected officials, and those of you who are appointed officials, you deal with people. There's a reason why somebody lives in Armagh. They're committed to Armagh. So there's a reason why somebody lives in Rye Brook. They're committed to that community, or Larchmont, or Hastings, or Arsley, or Osling, and every one of you, and every one of your jurisdictions. And with those realities, you're, um, you're in a situation where you have to provide the services that the people in your community see as essential to that community. When I was a kid growing up in Mount Vernon, I took garbage to the curb. I didn't think anything of it. For the 37 years that I've lived in the city of Rye, there is side yard pickup in Rye. I'm glad I don't have to bring it to the curb. The older I get, the less likely I want to bring it to the curb. <laughs> we have an issue with that in a couple of our communities right now. And it's an unfortunate issue. It's not to, to blame the, the communities themselves should be held harmless from what we're dealing with when we deal with this kind of an industry. But the bottom line is, some of you have volunteer fire departments. Some of you have fully professionally paid fire departments, and some of you have combination departments. What brilliant person can figure out how to work that out? It's not me, you know? And when you have a vibrant volunteer fire department that feels strongly about the way they can deliver that service, how do I argue with the community next door to them that has a fully paid department of city government? You can't. And the guy who gets on the train and goes into Manhattan doesn't worry about these things. We worry about these things. That's why we asked for a public office. That's why we get elected to try to balance these things. And that's what this shared service initiative is about. It's about finding the art of the possible. Where can we find these combinations that work? Just uh, a week or two ago, we announced uh, the reauthorization of the relationship that the county has with the village of Mount Kisco and police services. Now, that is a unique situation. And, and both uh, uh, Mayor Pickenich and myself credited our predecessors, Rob Astorino and Mike Sendridge, for the original deal. The reauthorization of the deal includes improvements on the deal, which the mayor can take credit for on behalf of her community. And that deal may or may not work for anybody else in this room. The willingness of the county is to work with you on it. There is no mandate that you do it. But if it makes sense for you, and if you think you can handle the obvious politics of it, then there's a template, and the template is laid out by what we've done in Mount Kiss. And we do have relationships with Takahoe and Cortland where we provide other certain things in backdrop. This particular plan is, is a very small step in that direction. The, the purchasing portal uh, is, we hope, a good step in the right direction, but there, there's so many other things we could do. But rational people, being you and me, and us and the people who work for us, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, so it falls to me to announce that uh, the quorum is present uh, to, uh, to vote, 31 are uh, present. And I see a yes and a no, does that mean we voted already? All right, so the vote was 31 yes, zero no. <laughs> I should only live so long to see these election results. <laughs> and what is left of my career. <laughs> So now that I've revved the engine for somebody else who's going to follow me with something of greater content than I've just delivered, uh, let me just say personally, thank you very much. I've been with almost every one of you in some context. A couple of times in tense moments, 
more often than not, in a positive moment. And, uh, and as, as I ask you to, to see through the titles that we have to the intent, I see through the titles and I see the intent. Uh, your party affiliation does not matter to me in terms of us working together. We'll find a way to fix the wall in Valhalla. We'll find a way to get the, the radio towers as acceptably as we can. Uh, we'll try to deal with every one of these things. And then in due time, we will turn all of this over to other people. And that's what democracy is. Is that from the people come the leadership, and the leadership in due time go back into the general population. Give me a script. What do you want me to do next? Just say goodbye? Do we bring them any refreshments? No, I don't see anything on the table to feed our friends from the municipal government. These people work hard, don't you understand? They deserve some coffee and a nosh. All of you know I go to senior centers, I do have some cold cookies in the car. For my day. Then I guess, I guess all that's left is to thank you for coming, to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah, to thank you for your friendship, and to thank you for your leadership in your communities. We hope in the county to be as good as leaders in our level of government as you are in yours. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.